Hi everyone, I'm Ian Levy, the Technical Director for the National Cyber Security Centre. Welcome to this session introducing the UK's new uh, Cyber Security Council. I'm going to let our brilliant panellists introduce themselves first and then we'll get into the meat of it. So I'm going to start off with Claudia. Claudia, can you introduce yourself please? Hi Ian and hi everyone. I'm Claudia Nadenson and I've been given the honourable task, humbling task, to be the Chair of the Board of Trustees for the UK Cyber Security Council. Right, thanks Claudia. That's Virginia, you. do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you Ian. Hi, I'm Virginia Hodge. I'm, uh, I, I was a member of the uh, Cyber Security Council Formation Project Independent Advisory Board. Right, thanks Virginia. Andrew? Thanks Ian. I'm Andrew Elliott. I'm Deputy Director for Cyber Security Policy at PCS, responsible for Cyber cybersecurity skills in the UK as well as innovation programs. Thanks, Andrew. And then finally, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Enso. I'm wearing two hats today. So I'm wearing my head of specialism hat under the, the government cybersecurity profession, where we're trying to define clear pathways for people whose jobs involve cybersecurity. And I'm also one of the deputy directors at the National Cybersecurity Centre responsible for cyber growth, where we've also, also been identifying things like training. Uh, identifying specialist expertise and also building the cyber body of knowledge. Great, thanks all. So look, before we get into the meat of things, um, we're going to have a, a presentation from uh, Matt Warman, the Minister of Digital Infrastructure at DCMS, who's the department sponsoring the Cyber Security Council. Um, so we'll go to that first, hear what the Minister's got to say, and then we'll get into a conversation. Thank you and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you all today as part of Cyber UK. As you know, the government has set out our ambitions in the recently published Integrated Review of Defence and Security that include establishing the UK as a world-leading, responsible cyber power. As we look to build back better from the pandemic, we'll shift towards taking a whole-of-society approach to cyber. This means recognising that in today's interconnected world, our strategy needs to draw upon the full range of our capabilities, including our expertise in tech, our industries and our people. In DCMS, this means that we will help to develop a strong and innovative cybersecurity ecosystem with good companies and capable people for a resilient digital economy that protects the public and enhances security. To achieve this ambition, we need a workforce that is both diverse in its constitution and sustainably supplied for the future. As society continues to rely on technology, the need for an increasing number of skilled cybersecurity professionals from all backgrounds across the UK continues to grow. 
And yet we know that half of all businesses in the UK lack the capability and the confidence to implement the basic security controls that will keep their organisation safe. As part of our work to support growth and diversity in the cyber workforce, I'm delighted to be speaking at the launch of the UK Cyber Security Council, funded by DCMS. The council has been built through extensive consultation with practitioners and organisations across the cyber security landscape. And in particular, I'd like to thank the Institution of Engineering and Technology, the Cyber Security Alliance, and the countless volunteers who worked together over the last two years to get us to this point. We know that the profession is complex and difficult to navigate for individuals and employers alike. There's a huge range of degrees, apprenticeships, standards, certifications and qualifications that exist and have been regularly developed. Now this all needs to be brought together. The knowledge, skills and experience required across the workforce needs to be clearly defined and articulated to support employers develop and retain the right talent to ensure their organisation's resilience. The Council is essential to this. I'm keen that DCMS, NCSC and wider government work with the Council to build on the successes of the National Cyber Security Strategy, which has seen £1.9 billion invested in new capabilities and programmes, many of which inspired, trained and supported individuals into a cyber security career. So we will look to the Council to develop the professional infrastructure of standards and pathways to help inspire interested young people and our current workforce to enter and develop in cyber roles, providing more confidence for UK organisations to understand their needs and recruit accordingly. This can be truly transformative and I'd encourage the entire cyber community and wider industry to work with and support the Council as it continues to grow and develop its work. We, as government, will now increasingly look to this body for guidance and leadership in this space as we support the development of a workforce built on a world-leading profession, diverse in its constitution and supported by an education and training system that inspires and equips future talent. So thank you once again for inviting me to open this session launching the Council and I hope you find the rest of this talk a lively and informative one. Right, well, that was a really uh, inspiring introduction there by our minister, um, talking about the complexity of the ecosystem for cybersecurity and the, the real challenge people have trying to uh, access the skills and knowledge they need to help secure their, their systems and their networks. It was also really interesting, he talked about diversity as well, where we've said for a long time that we need a better uh, uh, pipeline of diverse people coming into cybersecurity not just because it's the right thing to do, but because that diversity drives diversity of thought, diversity of solutions, uh, which will help us go up against our ever uh, innovative adversaries. Um, I think it's really interesting that the UK government's decided to set up the Cybersecurity Council now. Um, so Claudia, coming to you first, what do you think as the, uh, the chair of the trustees for the council? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and I think that both both the minister's remarks and your remark your remarks just now have um, kind of set a good stage for it. I think the council formation at this time is truly historic, and it's a it's a great thing for the profession and timely um, has been put out there. And I think one of the things that we can take away from some of the things that the minister said is that the heart of that is going to be about collaboration, the collaboration that we will need not just because we are to be seen as an umbrella, bringing together all the various bodies that are doing um, cyber security, um, whether it's be a service or whether they are part of it, but it's a collaboration. And for example, the collaboration that we are doing with NCSC, we've started that collaboration with Chris Ensign. I'm not going to steal his thunder, but in the areas of, of specialisms, and again, in the cyber, as he has said, but these are important components. There are so many, folks so many things happening to bring together to make a profession and for us i think the collaboration is going to be very key in making sure that we are relevant and we are on the penny in terms of what we're doing so great moment for us and i think as a council we're truly honored and humbled to be the, the voice and also to be the, the the area 
that the government will look to for advice and to be able to hold those standards of excellence. Really, truly a great task for us and we are humbled to be part of delivering that and part of the, the vision for the country to be one of the safest places to do business and work online. And I think it's, there's some analogy, isn't there, with other professions? So, you know, for lots yes. of other professions that have complicated ecosystems, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a council-like body that's going to help people navigate it, to give people career paths, to, to set those minimum standards you were just talking about skills. I and mean, do you think there's some analogies there we could learn from? I think there's a lot that we can learn from, and it's, it's, it's good that at least we have those other bodies. And, and, and just to, to, to be sure, those are some of the same bodies, even though they are not part of the direct cybersecurity ecosystem. But those are councils as well and bodies that we should be reaching out to, to have that conversation, because that's the wider ecosystem that we need. Some of those specialisms we use ourselves in cyber. Some of the law we use it as well. There's everything that, I mean, we have medical data that we're going to be holding and, and all those areas, I think, are components of what we call that ecosystem that the minister spoke about. So yes, if we are to uphold the areas of ethics, we can learn from them. If we are going to lead the way in terms of diversity, and it's not just diversity on the individual level in terms of equality and inclusivity, but it is also diversity in terms of the industry and sectors that we will work across. So huge mandate that we have, but we are truly up for it. That's great. It's really upbeat, Claudia. Thank you. I'm just thinking about you know, the need for this. Um, coming to Andrew, what do you think? How do you think this aligns with government's stated priorities? I mean, the minister touched on this a bit, but could you expand on that? Please? The, the minister gave us a statistic um, when he just spoke. He, he said that uh, half of businesses lack the capability and controls to keep them safe. I think um, sort of ta tackling that is, is really our, our top priority. That, that was a, a finding we found in our annual labour market survey for cybersecurity. And um, throughout our, our, our survey and numerous others, we see the same thing time and again. Organisations are just not equipped with the, the, right, the right skills. Another one that caught my eye when I was looking through it before this session was uh, that uh, nine, nine out of ten people who, who work in cybersecurity have that function um, built into their sort of non-cyber job. They're non-cyber people who've been given this additional hat to wear to look, to look after and defend uh, their organisations. Well, our priority is making sure that those people are actually uh, properly equipped with the knowledge. With the, with the skills, with the experience to actually be able to do this, to do this, to do this properly. And um, I think that would be our first priority. But, but, but secondly, and the minister picked up on this, and so did Claudia again, diversity. Um, th there really is a, an, an extraordinary diversity challenge facing us all in, in, this, in this profession. Diver diversity is, is bad generally in, in the technology sector in the UK, but cybersecurity is even worse. 16% Six, of the um, UK cyber workforce is, is female. And that, that's, that's at the entry level. As soon as you go to, to senior levels, it, it falls to you know, small single digits. Um, and if you look at any other diversity measure, um, we, we see we see we see the same problem. It's not it's not surprising in some ways that we we struggle to invite more people to join this profession when you when you when you look at the the nature of how it's constructed. Is it really the inclusive workspace that we that we that we must must build here? Which brings me to the sort of third priority, which is really a numbers game, and we just don't have the the the, the flow of people coming into the profession at the moment. We know lots of reasons why, why, that is, why that is the case. And of course, one of them is the lack of structure, the lack of career progression, the lack of clarity about how this um, career in cyber is going to take you. And the UK Cybersecurity Council is, is, a, is a great vehicle to try to crack that particular problem. So um, we're really excited about today's launch and, and where this is going to take us. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more with everything you've just said. I think we might come back to diversity a bit later if we've got time. Um, Virginia, I'm going to come to you next. You were on the formation of the council and you're here to represent industry. Yes. What do you think about the need for the council? The council is extremely important to industry. Um, as, as an employee <laughs> and a professional, I'm extremely keen to see that there's one professional body 
just like the engineering professions, uh, the law and accountancy, they all have professional bodies and we've been lacking that up until now. The work that the council have been doing on defining professional registration categories and what each of them will look like will be important both for, for myself and my professional colleagues and employers. As the minister highlighted in his talk, the profession is complex and it can be difficult to navigate, which brings its own challenges to, to, for those of us working in the profession. And the fact, I think, that the council is an independent body gives it a stronger voice in this work. Within the engineering profession, we have seen the benefit of having some independent recognition of the training, the quality of the training courses. And I can see that something similar could be of benefit to those uh, you know, assisting the companies offering the quality training uh, that, that there is. You know, how do you identify the best of the best? This is a way that they could do it. Um, and then to have the council as the go-to body for all cybersecurity issues will be of immense benefit to me as a professional. Um, so I think that it's really beneficial as an employee. If I put my employer hat on, in having some way of being able to identify what the competencies are of my, my employees um, and whether, where they may be slightly weaker in some areas that they might value training or on the job training, I think that could be important. And, and this idea of professional registration categories um, would help me when I'm looking to recruit people because then I'll have an independent judge as to how to find um, people that actually will meet my need. I hope that helps, Ian. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the, um, the independence of the council and those skills is, is really going to be critical in, in giving an objective view to people about you know, what sort of things people can do. Yes. So coming to Chris then, uh, so you're head of specialism for, for government for cybersecurity. Um, surely you're going to be, you're going to love this. You've got loads of people who have these skills, right? Well, as if I did. I wish I did have all those hundreds and, and hundreds of people. Um, so I think the minister hit the nail on the head when he said there's lots of great stuff out there, but nobody quite knows where it fits together. With my, with my head of specialism hat or my head of, um, head of profession hat within GCHQ, people always ask me, you know, what qualifications should they go for? What courses should they use? Uh, what sort of professional body should they look to? And, you know, I've been in this business over 30 years and I really struggle to answer some of those questions because there's a lot of good stuff out there and it is and it is good stuff but it's not really clear um where it all kinds of kind of fits in and i mean we've we've been around a while and we've kind of got to our position sort of through a bit of evolution we don't you know it wasn't really we had a no planned career path we kind of went from job to job and that takes a long time and we haven't got that time so we've got to condense that down into something so being able to choose what's the good qualification what's the good course what's good training that all fit together that we can accelerate people's learning into you know into roles within the profession and, and just picking up something that virginia said you know i am really jealous of other government professions because they can look to national professions legal accounting you know and, and they can pull in those standards and we can't really do that until now and i think for me that's what the council offers it's going to provide long-awaited clarity something that we've been you know we've been looking for uh, you know for, for a very long time and i think you know from from my head of specialism perspective we're still going to have to build you know the government security framework because we need it now um but i want to do that with the council that that's kind of can we do it together can we you know align some of our thinking um and that's kind of where i want to go um building it with the council as we go forward that's great, and that, that's a great uh, segue, because Claudia mentioned uh, collaboration in her first uh, intervention. So I'm gonna go Claudia, uh, Virginia, then Chris, I think, and just say, so collaboration, right? It's a lovely word, what does it actually mean? How is industry, the council, and NCSC gonna work together to actually make this thing real? So Claudia, Virginia, then Chris, please. Uh, Ian, yeah. I think here's where collaboration, and we see collaboration starting with and i think there are two things you bring in together when you're bringing a profession you're bringing the knowledge and you're bringing the practice the experience the skills you need to be relevant 
I mean, we are already preparing for 2025 and the explosion of IoT. I think the minister was, think, was talking about that. We're going to have over 40 billion IoT devices on the IoT platform. So it's a, it's a different type of, of skill set, but we need core skill sets. We need to understand how to, as, as Chris said, navigate them. So here's where the collaboration starts. If you look on, for example, some of the, the reports that have come out of DCNS itself, I mean, we are looking on in the SME area, almost 6 million of these organizations out there who need our support. That's where we're starting with the diversity across all sectors. They need that support. They need that professionalism to support them. And then we have the larger organizations, which is an umbrella. We are supposed to be bringing together all the cyber security organizations who have that expertise, that experience to be able. And then we need to then reach out there to talk about, if we don't have equality, you cannot have diversity and inclusion. I can tell you that. So again, one of the things that we need to do is to start on that equality thing, making sure that we are reaching out across the wider academia and education, starting with young, starting them young. So there's diversity, real diversity, but there's equality to be able to enter that pathway that is going to lead them to understand specialisms. That's important to me because I think I need every child to be able to get that education pathway, to be able to reach at a stage where they can partake of frameworks and see the profession as something that I think I would like to be in. So yes, it's diversity across all sectors because at the end of the day, cybercrime is no respecter of sector or size. And, and at the end of the day, the diversity that we need needs to represent our society. And so that's where I'm talking about collaboration across every sector, collaboration across every area to be able to deliver on those areas. Thanks, Claudia. That was brilliant. I love listening to you talking about that stuff. Uh, Virginia. Thank you, Ian. Um, I, and thank you, Claudia. Collaboration, I can see industry working so well with the council and it's vital that, that the council and industry work together to really build on the collaboration and, and strengthen the diversity and the experience within the profession. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Chris? Yeah, so, you know, having the right skills is such a core thing to everything we do. You know, if, you, if, you were gonna, if, you, if you're going to set up a hospital, you can't do it if you've got no if you've got no medical staff. And, and it's the same for cyber, you know, we've got to have the people with the skills, whether it's in government, whether it's in industry, whether it's in education, because we need people with the expertise to teach the next generation, or whether it's in academia doing research. It, it, it really is core if we want to make the UK a safe place to live and work online. That's the NCSC mission, but we need everybody else to, to kind of have the right skill sets to do that. And, and so from the NCSE's perspective, and a lot of the work I've been doing, it's about, you know, how do we build some of that capability? And, and I'd just give you sort of, sort of an example of that. So the cybersecurity body of knowledge, CYBOC to its friends, you know, is, is a great example of where we've tried to document everything somebody needs to know to work in cybersecurity. And we've never had this before. You know, it's always been about... Um, a course here or a course there, but now we can we've now documented exactly what we you know what we think if you're going to be a risk person or an architect person, these are the sorts of things that you're going to need. And and it's quite a you know it's it's really quite a powerful tool because you can start doing things like developing curriculums around it. You can do assessments or courses and, and you know our, our degree assessment process use has, has just moved over to use the cybersecurity body of knowledge. We were using skills. Um, and, and that's an interesting challenge because skills are almost at the next level up. You know, you need a lot of a load of knowledge, but then you apply them with, with the skills that you have. Uh, and so the cyborg is really beginning to define, hopefully, you know, that common language so that when we all talk about a liver or a heart, you know, in our language, we all know what it means. Because it can be quite dangerous if you talk about the same words, but in different with different meanings. Um, and I've always seen NCSC as really being a bit of a curator of that body of knowledge on behalf of the community. And a number of the other things that we do is also um, is part of our role to building that capability and capacity the UK needs to, you know, to be the safe place to, to live and work online. And, you know, I would, I see the future as, you know, I want to hand over these to the council at some point. When the time is right, you know, I'm working with them to, to start to think about, you know, how do we transition some of the stuff we've got. 
For me, the council is key to setting sort of professional standards. From an NCSC perspective, you know, we're the technical authority, the national technical authority. Um, but I would look to the council to be setting those professional standards. And, and some of the stuff we do, we can move away from it and then move into the core stuff in that sort of deep research, that, that future analysis. So that, that for me, is where I, how I see NCSE working with the council. Right, ab absolutely, Chris. And I think, you know, everybody's mentioned skills and capabilities. So, I mean, Andrew, your, your department's responsible for cyber skills in the UK. How do you see this all fitting together? Well, I think, um, so, so cyber skills is, is sort of part of the digital skills world. It's always a bit sort of complicated trying to actually nail down exactly what it means. And... Um, uh, I mean, there is a sort of temptation sometimes when you're surrounded by technical people to talk about those, 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 those core technical skills and, and the need to get more people into computing and computer science and uh, high tech uh, related degrees. But of course, cyber skills are actually a much broader spectrum of things. And there are lots of different um, uh, backgrounds that people come from in, in, into this, into this uh, area. And I think actually, if, if we had the profession mapped out um, as the council's going to do, it, it, will, it will act as a draw for a whole range of different people um, to, come, to come into this, into this field. Now, I was sort of thinking, um, as we were listening to Chris there, about, um, you know, we've heard lots of analogies about how we, how we look at other professions. And um, we've heard about law and accountancy and medicine. And, and I was sort of thinking, you know, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a business leader or, or as, a, as a leader of government, you, you don't necessarily have to uh, have, a, have a law degree, but you still have to have a good understanding of what's lawful <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and a sort of understanding of what the sort of legal framework is that your, your, your company is, or is, is operating in. And, and it's the same with cyber. You, know, you, 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 you need from the top of every organization to understand the importance of making decisions which actually fit within the sort of uh, operating environment that is safe to, to safe, safe, safe to, to run and manage without, without taking unnecessary risks. So the council is going, to, um, is, 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 going, is going to cover all of these things. In terms of government, I mean, I think our, our role is, is really, um, really important here. You, you, you have to look at the, 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 the shape of the cybersecurity sector and the, and the consumers of cybersecurity services across the UK. And you see the, the number one consumer of cyber services, public sector. We are, we are a huge um, uh, consumer. Financial services, where I, I would have thought actually would be at the top, but it's, it's second fiddle. Um, so, what, so therefore, that gives us a, a huge responsibility. We, we, we can really show leadership um, in this area in terms of how do we uh, handle cyber right from the top of our organizations in central government, from the sort of permanent secretary down in the rest of um, uh, public bodies, from the, from the chief executive down. Um, we, we, we should uh, look at how we actually re recruit, how do we train, how do we upskill our workforces. Um, around cyber, how do we map that to what the profession's doing? How do we work in lockstep with the professional on developing those things? Um, how do we buy? We, we, how do we buy services? How do we um, uh, buy products? And in, uh, we, 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 can, um, we can really drive the market with our buying power before, before we get to any other intervention government might consider. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that point about those really diverse skills. I mean, Chris mentioned it before, you know, he and I have been in this a long time. When I first started, you had to be a mathematician. If you weren't a mathematician, you weren't fit to do this. And if I look across the NCSC about the people who are doing amazing work every day, most of them are not mathematicians. Who knew there were other professions other than maths? And I think your point about really, you know, taking every piece of innovation, every skill, every uh, bit of knowledge that's out there, to help us build this uh, community much, much more resiliently than it is today. Absolutely right. I mean, Chris, just talking of skills, you've, you've run Cyber First. Um, how do you think that fits in with, with the council and the skills agenda? So, so Cyber First really is, is our future talent pipeline for, um, for cybersecurity. Now, it started off as a bursary scheme, but we found you know, that what we weren't getting was was the diversity in the applicants for the bursary scheme. So we had to work a lot harder with, with colleagues in, in, in DCMS to encourage and inspire more girls, you know, to think about a career. And that's, you know, Cyber First Girls competition is all about that. But it's so important to um, tackle this at a younger age. 
um, so that we inspire them to think about that career in technology, but also in cybersecurity. Yes, it's not all about technology, absolutely. But if you look at the, the research that DCN has done, you know, uh, a lot of the gaps are in, in quite technical technical roles. We are trying to find those. And, and hopefully, you know, I'm really looking forward to working with the council because it has to be a complete pathway. You know, you want to find, you know, students at 11 and you want to show them, you know, this is where you can be a 23, 24 when you come through the education system or when you're thinking of an apprenticeship or whatever pathway you're taking. Being able to show that is something that we can't do at the moment. You know, if you want to be a doctor, we all know what a doctor looks like. And so we kind of know the pathway. We don't understand that in cybersecurity. So I think, you know, combining cyber first with the council that will kind of pick them up as they come up the education system is really, you know, something that's quite exciting. Yeah, so I mean, just listening to you all talk, you know, this very complicated ecosystem, um, there's a lot of uncertainty around this. So I mean, this is a big ask, right? This is a big lift to do the cybersecurity council to bring order and competence and rationality to this. I mean, Andrew, how do you think we're going to manage that? Well, Ian, this isn't going to happen overnight. Um, we, we, we have been um, working on, on this uh, program to set up the council for um, some years now. Um, we, there's been a huge amount of effort put in, in the last year from the um, uh, IET, from the, all, the, all the volunteers have put in, put in a huge amount of time. Um, and, and that's got us to where we are, but the road ahead has got so much that needs to be done. Um, I think, I think what, we, what we need to be clear as government is that we are absolutely determined to, to stick with this for the, for the long haul. We, we, we see the council as um, a, a really uh, crucial key vehicle to actually deliver change in this, in this area. Um, if, 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 we can, um, if we can make career pathways clear, if we can show people what a career in cybersecurity leads to and you know, make it an attractive proposition, if we can make the, the, work the workforce more diverse, if we can make it more inclusive, if we can make the whole thing seem a bit more interesting and less focused on, uh, uh, I don't know, coding or, or sort of all the, all, the, all the things which perhaps are a turn off to uh, uh, the, the, the community that we're trying to appeal to. I think um, we'll, we'll achieve some, some real change. But yes, it's, 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 a, it's a long project and we need to embed it in, in, into so many things we do in government and beyond. And I think um, it's very important that we, we continue to, to talk and consult um, with, our, with, 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 with industry and, and with, with our partners across uh, the economy to, to ensure that we can actually embed that change for good. Could I, mm. could I just add something now? I'm just thinking from an, from an industry point of view, I, I could really see if we could have um, a, a vision as to what different career pathways you can take. You know, because um, Chris talked about cyber architects. You know, you've got your penetration testers. You've, you've, got, you've, you've got the people that, that are really looking at, at the threats of, about. But there are so many different opportunities within within the profession and I think really identifying what those career pathways are I think that could really fire sort of this diversity angle because you don't necessarily need to get into the deep technical specialisms right. you've got the architecture work you've you've got the the, the assessment against uh, across the system and those sorts of things require different skills talking with customers Again, another different skill set and, and that ability to be able to, to um, interface between the technical specialisms and the customer who may not be so technical. I think that there's, there's a real potential there from, from, an, from an industry point of view. I don't know how that would fit in with, with the council, so I'm not trying to, to you know, um, maybe that's a future piece of work to do. Um, because the council, you know, as part of the formation project, um, I know how much work we we did to 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 really give the found, the council a, a, a solid foundation. But I know there's an awful lot more work for them to do. I think that's absolutely right, Virginia. All those different yeah. sorts of uh, careers and, and skills that we need to get actual cybersecurity out into the real world and protect in the real world. So, in Claudia, you've heard a lot about all of that. What what do you think? <laughs> I think one of the things that I started, and I think for over two decades, as everybody knows, I've been 
you know, trudging across sectors, <laughs> across different technologies, and it's been a long road. But I, I, and one thing remains sure, we continue to secure a moving target. And when we talk about securing a moving target, that is not just a target of technology. It's a target of how businesses and organizations have changed, how they run their business. The pandemic alone meant that organizations have had to pivot the business. And security is one of those things that underpins the whole business, the whole organization. And so bringing all those skills together is really, really important. And I think one of the things when I talk about security, I want people to, to, to understand that security wears two hats. There is a technological side, but remember, the impact is on the business. It's on the revenue line. It's all about how the organization can be remain resilient. And so the skills, some of those skills that we need is the ability to speak to the board, not in zeros and ones, not in terms of acronyms, but what is it that they need to do? They need to be able to be able to make quick decisions and prioritize on the risks that they feel they need to be able to mitigate, manage, whatever. And so the bringing together of those skills means not just understanding the technology, but how to make it understandable to the business. So everything that we have seen is about that those collaborations, all those organizations are out there are going to be part of that. Academia will be part of it. Education is going to be part of it. And of course, I find that myself of being in the profession, I get so many inundated by emails, people on LinkedIn wanting to understand what my journey was like. And it was a long, parts of it very lonely, but parts of it that I know I can help others to be able to see differently, see the way that this profession has made me enjoy it. So that's why I'm still here. And I think there's a lot to offer. So and that's why I remain upbeat. And I think I'm harping on that word collaboration because that's the pillar. We're in a data-centric world. We're in a world that we're going to see so many changes. And so you can't be fixated even in your specialism, you have to understand that you have to work across functions in an organization, across specialisms. So lots for us to do. Really super exciting time and a, a great one for the government to be supporting us as well for that. And I do just want to leave it one thing in because one of the things that makes um, security successful when we are implementing it is the support from the top. If you get the support from the top of the organization, it's written in standards. You stand 90 odd percent chance of that program sticking, of that program being a success. And I see the top for us in the council being the government. And we know that the support that we will need to get from the government to discharge what it is asking us to do is going to be really, really important in this, along with the collaboration that we have amongst the wider organizations and the work that others are doing. No, thanks for that. I think you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm quite shocked that you think we can't talk to boards in, uh, in JSON and XML. I think every board should <laughs> <laughs> I am joking, obviously, of course not. That translation function is absolutely critical for the kind of technologies we deal with. And you know, as soon as we start saying, well, you know, if you don't understand this, oh, board member, you're not doing your job properly. I think it's probably us not doing our job properly because we have to be able to take that really complicated landscape of things and, and turn it into something that intelligent professional people can understand. They just happen not to be expert in our field. And I think that, that kind of developing those sorts of skills will be absolutely critical to this going forward. Um, so talking about kind of not, not the really deep technical ones and zero skills, ethics seems to come up quite a lot. And you've just said, you know, the government's got to be there to help you. Chris, what, what do you think about the kind of the ethics piece of this? I think it's 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 so I think it's so important, and I think it needs to be you know cyber security can can be seen in lots of, lots of different ways, and I think um, there's a negative element to it, and I think having you know people who really understand the legal side and the law and all that kind of things is really important. I think I just make a, a slight point about you know you, you could think listening to the conversation that we need people to be everything. Um, 
and and they're unicorns. I mean, there are not many unicorns in this space. I mean, Ian, you're you're a, I would I would say you're a bit of a unicorn in this space because you can do <laughs> ones and zeros, and you can talk to very senior people at board, CEO level, and all that kind of thing. But you know, trying to build lots of people like you would be great, I think. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we need we need people with lots of different skill sets and lots of different pathways. There is not one size fits all. And I think, yes, we do need the deep techies. And yes, we do need the people who can speak to the board. And there's a whole load of people in between. You know, I always talk about medical analogy. I always use medical analogies because hopefully it's something that people can kind of relate to. You know, and if you think of the medical profession, it starts off with people being able to do first aid and it goes all the way up to brain surgeons and everything in between. And they all need different skills, different backgrounds. But coming back to your ethics question, at the end of the day, I think, you know, there's an important part here. We cybersecurity professionals have a responsibility to look after people's data, look after people's systems. Um, and we just, we have to do that properly and we have to do that transparently so people understand exactly what we're doing to look after them and look after their, you know, their lives to a certain extent. So it's a really important part of it. Again, I see the council as a, uh, you know, a really playing a really important role in setting that standard, defining what good good looks like and, and providing that, that vision that we can all move towards. I've been called lots of things in my time. That's my first <laughs> unicorn. So thanks for that, Chris. Appreciate it, mate. I'll get my revenge at some point. <laughs> so, I mean, Virginia, you, you've kind of mentioned that standard of excellence yes. a couple of times as you've been talking. Mm. What sort of thing do you expect from the council on that? I, I think from an industry point of view, if, if the council could give us this standard of excellence and work with us to define it, that would be absolutely I ideal. Because at the moment, what we've got is we've got everybody saying, well, I'm doing something ethical, this is my standard, but you've got standards sort of one level it's here, the next level it's here, then it's here. And actually, I think if the council could provide a levels playing field with, with, with a defined standard, then that would help industry phenomenally. And I, I'd just also like to pick up on what Claudia and Chris have said about, about this, and, and, and actually what Andrew said as well, about being able to talk at the CEO level um, and, and explain the importance of what cyber is all about but also then being able to talk at, at, at the technical level so that we can engage with the cybersecurity professionals, but also then with the, with the children as to how dynamic and how inspiring this industry can be. Yep, absolutely. and you can become a unicorn apparently as well. Oh, <laughs> so, good, excellent. So, so Claudia, I mean, that, that's, that's again a really big waterfront. Um, you must have yeah. been inundated with offers of help. Have, have you, have, oh, yeah. you had that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and just on the back of what um, my other colleagues here have been saying, I want, I want to say that security is all about, when we look at cyber, it's all about a duty of care. And before we, before we can have ethics, we have to display integrity. Because I think as a practitioner, those two goes to, they, they, go, they go hand in hand with me, especially when I'm practicing. I need to have integrity. Integrity is everything. Integrity of data, integrity of systems, integrity in the way we work. So I think Virginia also um, touched on something that I wanted to go back to about this level playing field that we need to set. And that's where we're starting with the standards and those offers that you're asking me. So if we loop that back already, I am just super, so grateful about so many of the offers that have been coming into us about ways that people wanting, getting ready, I want to know what I can do. I want to be a part of this journey. And I have to keep then applying the, the cyber security, the security approach, which is the plan, do, check, act, not act quickly. It's about, um, we know that we, and you know what? I think that enthusiasm is coming because it is about, this has been in the long time coming. It's something that we have wanted. And I can understand that people are so excited about wanting to dive in, but we really have to do the plan, check, do, act, um, security um, kind of action, because there's a lot of things. That collaboration that we spoke about, that we started, we need to bring that to the table. One of the other things that came out since we have been speaking is the word relevance. We need to make it relevant. Look, look at so many of the other things that are, are, are going to be 
thrown at us, mm -hmm. not, the, not just in AI and ML and all of those things. We need to bring all of those things. So many good work being done across organizations. We need to bring that to the table to make sure that when we are saying, yes, here is how you can help, because we know when we practice security, security is everyone's business. It's not just the council's business. It's going to be about what everyone can do to make it so relevant. And so we are ready at the council to do that. And I, and at the same time, I, you know, I want to just recognize and be say I'm really very grateful for, for all of that enthusiasm that has come our way. And um, I, I'm just, I couldn't be prouder. Of, of being part of a profession at, at this time like that with that enthusiasm. I love it, I really do. Well, so it sounds like a nice problem to have. Um, so yes. go on then, let's ask you the hard question. What are you gonna do in the next 12 months, Claudia? What's the council gonna do for us? Oh yeah, um, really, really um, energized with that. Um, I just want to even recognize the rest of the board of trustees. We have Jessica Figueroa, she's the vice chair um, we have Carla Baker from Palo Alto, and she's also um, a board trustee. We have as a CFO, we have Mike Watson, very sturdy and strong on the numbers looking at us. And of course, we have the interim CEO and MD, which is Don McIntyre. We are working tirelessly. We are energized, first of all, by the inundation of not only the good words that people have said to us, the kind words that has, uh, have been said to us, but we are using that and I also need to say thank you before I forget to move into the activities that you're going to see. I want to say thank you to the NCSC, um, not just through the, the fact that I'm working a lot with Chris Denser, but today, for, for example, of sharing that stage, the DCMS, for the work that um, just the support, they're going to be with us on a journey, and IET, and of course the Alliance members and all the volunteers. But over the next couple of months, what we're doing is we're bringing all this energy and people are going to be seeing that what we are creating are the channels. We're making sure that we are making the right channels that will one, make us relevant and that everybody can find a place to be able to help. The worst thing is being sitting there wanting to help, wanting to help and not being called and not knowing how they can help. So I say to them, please look, you're going to be seeing us saying, these are the ways in which you can help and make it so that everybody finds a place where they can help. The other thing is to, again, make sure that we are talking across sectors, across industry sites, there comes that diversity. Remember we wanted to talk about that equality? So it doesn't matter about what size your organization is or what sector it is, there will be a channel for you to get that support that you need. Because half of the time, if you look at the DCMS report again, that is saying that 70% of them don't even have a policy or know how to implement it properly. Support, that is the support they need. Making sure we're bringing together the profession and the industry to support, to truly, really deliver against that vision that the UK has asked of us to make sure that we are, not just UK, a piece for global, to look and say we are one of the best places to do work and do business online and we are carrying the flag and i'm going to make sure that that flag is way out there because i know we can do it and we're ready to do it look world and be envious <laughs> it's great that is a great way of putting it um it's going to be a busy year though so look um, yes. we're running out of time unfortunately so i'm going to come to each of you in turn um at most one minute what's the one message you'd, you'd give to our audience today, our virtual audience, about the council. Andrew, start with you. Um, the, I think Claudia's already said that uh, there are lots of people out there who, who want to help. I think that the cybersecurity sector always want to help. Every meeting I've ever been in with somebody in industry and a minister, they are always telling the minister how much they recognize these problems and how they want to help. But here is a real opportunity for some kind of proper coordination so that this is a collaborative effort that actually achieves something and sticks. So I think my, my one message would be take Claudia seriously, join the council, and, um, and let's, uh, let's all get our, get our heads together to see how we can collectively drive this forward. Thanks. So certainly something I've learned over the years is take Claudia seriously. I know that much is right. <laughs> Virginia, how about you? Uh, well, I think recognise the importance of what the council is doing um, because it, 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 it is 
absolutely fundamental. So, so yeah, recognise its importance. And, and again, I would stress get involved. It, it, I've so enjoyed doing part of the formation project. But, you know, in, the council is here to help and industry can recognise that and, 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 and follow on. Yep, absolutely. Chris? Oh, well, it's an easy one, isn't it? It's, it's support the council. And, you know, when the time is right, if you want to talk to NCSE about skills, you come through the council. That's what they're there for. Um, and I look forward to working with them. Right. And then finally, Claudia. One oh, minute, Claudia. <laughs> Only one. Yeah, my, my message is government, you have asked us to deliver. We are going to deliver. What we need is you to support us. And we're here. That was a very nice finisher, Claudia. I love it. So it gives me great pleasure just to wrap up, to say thank you to our panel, um, to say thank you to Andrew from DCMS, to Virginia from uh, Heron Associates, Chris from NCSC, and Claudia, the chair of the trustees for the new UK Cybersecurity Council. Personally, I'm quite excited about this. I think this is going to be awesome. I genuinely do. I think it's going to be world leading. I think it's going to be a way of really turbocharging the skills agenda and the professionalism of cybersecurity over the next few years. And yeah, Claudia, absolutely up with you on the uh, on the the energy you've got behind it that you and the council have brought to this and i think it is going to be absolutely fantastic so i'd just like to say thank you to the council to the formation project to dcms for funding it to chris for leading the ncsc part um, and i would say to the audience exactly the same as my colleagues have said please support the council it is there for you it's there to make cybersecurity into the professionalism uh, that it deserves to be, that we need it to be, in order to make the UK the safest place to live and work online. Thank you.